today I'm going to talk about the release of the golf club. The way I believe we need to release a club from, if we think of a clock, 6 o'clock is straight down where the ball is, 12 o'clock would be straight above us, 9 o'clock would be this direction, 3 o'clock would be this direction. So the main part of the golf swing for us to create speed and control and have a real impact on what is happening with our golf ball is from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. All the rest going back. Now obviously there's a little method to it, but the majority of it based on how many different types of backswing we've seen throughout life. The majority of the backswing is to get the club into some kind of position, whether it be inside, outside, up, short or long, some kind of position to allow us our feel for what has to happen from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock and then beyond. So what I like to think of is one of the, the things I do not like hearing on Golf Channel and magazines and what have you is for people to be told to release the club, to release that toe over. Now the toe getting released over is just a right-handed action where the arms separate off our body. Some people when they release, you know, they might even chicken wing their left arm. Now that's just getting rid of all the tension that we need, the packed connection that we need in our upper arms to our chest to control the golf club. So our arms, you know, they weigh, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds chop your arm off and weigh it and you'll, you'll get a really good idea of what it actually is. But our arms are quite heavy. So when we're swinging, there's a lot of momentum that wants to throw out that way. So we want to fight that by keeping the upper arms near our body. So we keep the club head and the grip closer to our mass on the way through. This being our main weight, our main mass. As soon as we elongate that space, we've lost control of the club face. So we can really keep the club under our control the closer we keep it in. A tight circle will move faster than a circle, an oval that you know elongating out. So we're going to create speed and velocity by keeping that club in tighter, and we're going to do it with our body keeping that arm connection and we don't have to go just using our hands. Now one of the ways I like to think of this is look at a golf club the shaft runs down into the heel it does not run down into the toe so we need to be thinking of this part of the golf club when we're swinging if we think of the toe get from this view is our address position we think of releasing the toe, instinct says our hands are going to raise higher than our address position was. And when our hands lift up and we try and roll that toe over, the shaft is not staying on our alignment that we want. Our target, it can go off to the right, it can go straight but very closed and it can also turn right around. Now I like to think of the heel, the heel of the golf club. That's what I want to be trying to get through the ground, not the toe. Don't want to be worrying about the toe. If I can think of the heel, here's my address position, and try and return that heel back into the ground, you can see how my whole upper body stays more connected and I turn the club through. So when I turn that club through, it's my body doing it, and you'll still see the toe turns over. The toe turns over, but it does it because it rotated around with our connection, our turn, our control, and our speed. Much better way to do it, much easier way to do it, and gives us much more control. If we look at this T marker, quite a heavy piece of wood here. If I set up to that T marker, 
and I do what I've been told about turning the toe over and releasing that club with my hands, what will happen is I won't move that marker very far because I, I have to lift and roll. And when I do that, I'm losing the face on the marker, which would be the same as a golf ball. Now, if I think of the heel, and I try and keep that heel low, and I try and turn the heel through, my body takes over, and you can see I can move that quite heavy T marker a little bit further, because the face stays on it longer, and it gets turned through with my rotational parts of my body, my connection. Hogan talked about this on uh, Ed Sullivan's show. There's a video of that. He said how he showed us how our upper arms are packed. And the golf swing was basically something like this. Clutch your sides with your elbows and visualize your elbows being attached to your body and your arms instead of at your shoulders. And just start moving your body from right to left, around in a circle holding your elbows in your side, right in your side. Now, we can't go around a golf course doing this all day, so we must lengthen the swing somewhere or other. You see, this is an absolutely full swing. Isn't that simple? Anyone can do it. Just increased the range of motion either direction. But it's basically the same thing. We need a cohesive tension up above here in our upper arms because we want that club to work in a nice, tight fit circle so we can keep control of it and move it faster. As soon as the club elongates and works into an oval shape, we've lost our speed circle moves faster than an oval and we've lost our face because our arms, upper arms have got disconnected from our body so the club is going to throw off and not be on our Another thing to see, and I talk about this on my website, is I like to see the follow through finish point to be somewhere up here where both arms are extended. Now that is not something we want to try and do. It comes as a direct result of what we've been talking about. So the, to keep that heel pressuring through the strike, what it does is it gets my chest, shoulders, hips, everything rotated out of the way. Because I still have speed and I rotate out of the way, my arms and hands and club have nowhere else to go but up. So I've kept them in a nice tight circle and then we go up and we see this in the follow through a lot of the great players ever. In fact, best three revered ball strikers, Hogan, Trevino and Mo Norman, all hit that point at the end of their follow through finish. So it becomes a direct result of our rotation out of the way where our hands disappear left, toe releases because of the upper body connection, we have nowhere else for this club to go now because it's still got speed, it goes up, it's as simple as that. So if you get these things right, you're going to have a much better looking golf swing and more importantly you're going to have a lot more control of your golf ball. Thank you.